Good afternoon. My name is Caroline Komsta Sławinska, and together with Yolanta Czuczko and Dorota Jutrzenka Suprin from the Department of Paper and Leather Conservation at the Nikolaus Copernicus University, we are going to talk about conservation dilemmas, a training to accessing and exhibiting objects of cultural heritage. We would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present our material. As we all know, the conservators struggle with a paradox, recoiling the owner's expectation of accessibility and the constraints of preservation. To illustrate this paradox and perhaps give you some example of solution, I will use example from our work. First example is the R13 Gradual, an exceptional, valuable manuscript for Polish culture. Its origins come from the Cistercian Abbey in Pelplin. The Gradual is dated to the third quarter of the 14th century and still adorns the collection of Diocesan Library in Pelplin. The luxurious parchment codex contains text and musical notation of the mass chants and is characterized by exceptional richness of decoration. In addition, many centuries of use have enriched the codex with a number of notes inscribed on the pages. The richness of the manuscript's content is complemented by invisible elements hidden in the details of the binding used from the 14th century manuscript's parchment leaves as paints downs and reinforcement of the spine. The codex was the subject of research already in previous years, but more detailed historical research was held back by the poor condition of the book. That is why the new project was launched, which included, in addition to codicological, historical, artistic and source research, the carrying out of conservation restoration. One of the important objectives of the project was to make available all the contents of the manuscript. We wanted to exhibit the artifact not only at the end of the conservation project, but also during it. That is why an exhibition was arranged which revealed all the components of the binding hidden inside. The next exhibition presented the gradual after the conservation of the book block and the reintegration of binding elements. A multidimensional view of the codex was possible thanks to use of a transparent acrylic book stand and mirrors arranged below. The project was accompanied by exhibition, conferences, lectures and poster session, introducing those interested in the issues related to the manuscript more broadly. Extensive use was also made of making the manuscript available in digital form. Apart from traditional scans of all pages, the image of the whole is complemented by close-ups of particular miniatures or initials made in digital photography technique and photographs of structural elements of the binding which were hidden again after reintegration of the codex. A similar project involved a group of codices with marginal notes by the famous astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus. The research and conservation project covered the full complexity of the issues. But a tremendous amount of attention was focused on the annotation themselves. Multi-phased and non-invasive research was carried out to confirm their authenticity and proper attribution, for example by paleographic analysis which were carried out, analysis based on forensic science. Care was also taken to provide an in-depth look and the analysis of iron gall inks and as well as to other elements of the books. Broad interdisciplinary collaboration between researchers and conservators has resulted in a detailed understanding of complex structure of the collection, as well as the presence of Copernicus' handwritten notes, a feature common to them and of a great importance. This research had a significant impact on conservation decision made, such as minimal intervention necessary, which was assumed, and has an undoubted influence on the perception of the book as authentic. Also, insight into the structure of the codices allowing us to use to see the risk and limitation has increased 
custodians awareness improved safety of temporally display and provide almost limitless access thanks to digitization. Here we can see a large hand-drawn map of the free state of Pszczyna made by Andros Hindenburg in 1636. It is over 3 meter by 2 in size. As we can see in the photograph, it was disintegrated and in a catastrophic condition. Probably that was the reason for cutting the map into 12 sections. Due to the significant degree of destruction, it was no longer legible. Only a number of advanced studies and analyses made it possible to document and record the lost content, so that they could be made available as material for further scientific, historical and cartographic studies. Thinking about treatment was subordinated, among other things, to the form in which the map is to function in the future. Due to the large format and poor condition, we decided to maintain the historical division into 12 sections. The challenge in this case was to design such a system of mounting that would enable safe access, temporary exhibition and storage. At the same time, it was important to us that the mounting system take into account the aesthetics and specificity of the cartographic artifact. From the left, you can see the condition of the map before treatments in the center section after treatment that they were virtually combined and on the right, virtual reconstruction made on the basis of historical sources. The project of conservation finally allowed us to discover the map in a more comprehensive way and appreciate its various aspects, not only aesthetic, and then to display them and make them accessible. Another example is a Chinese scroll. It was a challenge to plan and carry out the conservation restoration of the painting due to its complexity in terms of meaning, chronology and technology. The object was created in a few stages between which it was severely damaged. At first, only the background and architectural composition was created. Then the scroll was withdrawn from use, potentially due to its poor condition. The third stage included numerous repairs and painting the ancestor directly on the original painting layer, as we can see on the photograph on the right. The slides show the poor condition of the scroll, but there were more challenges affecting this conservation project. They include the form of painting, which is a scroll, and as we know, it is characterized by its ability to be rolled up and unrolled. The second problem was the progressive degradation of the substrate. And last but not least, the numerous strata layers affecting the original. The repairs were highlighted in red on the photo, showing the reverse of the painting. Here we can see past infills. We of course decided to preserve them because they were significant for the meaning of the painting. However, in order to preserve the original structure, infills had to be adjusted by the trimming them to the size of the loss. The effects of conservation and restoration was structural reinforcement of the painting. The aesthetics and exhibition values were restored. Having regard to the original form of the scroll and keeping various multiply paint layers, which were significant for the construction of the painting and its meaning and the possibility of safe storage and temporary exhibiting. Let's move on to the next realization, which are Marie Leblot's watercolors depicting scenes from prisoner of war camp in Shubin. This is another example where the struggle with the form and construction was the main problem. This kind of object, on the one hand, a work of art, painting, and on the other, a document of region's history, present a great exhibition value, all the more so because its owner is the museum. However, the possibility of safe exhibition was limited not only because of the sensitive technique and materials, but also by the significantly damaged construction due to the total corrosion of the metal stumples binding the pages in the box. 
Practically every manipulation turning over the pages resulted in progressive damage. Hence, the owner's initial desire to remove the individual watercolors and exhibit them independently. Such a procedure would result in the loss of the original form of the sketchbook, so unique and extremely rarely preserved. The more that, as they are a flagship example of paper accessories by popular manufacturers of the time, such as the Pelican Company or the Kringlowski Company. The dilemma was solved by reinforcing and modifying the structural elements of the blocks in a way that was almost invisible, but effective enough to fully open and rearrange the individual watercolors. This also made it possible to take good quality photographs of all the watercolors and to obtain digital copies of them. As a result, it became possible both to temporarily exhibit the original watercolors in blocks under appropriate condition, of course, and to make the digital equivalents available. Authors often expect that the, after conservation works, the historic artifacts will be restored and can be proudly displayed on the walls of their homes for years to come. It is especially important in the case of family heirlooms, such as Erasm Fabiański watercolor sketch, depicting a historical corner of 19th century Krakow. The problem was not only the particularly sensitive materials and technique, but also the significant degree of damage to the object, mainly as a result of the silverfish, about 35% of the surface of the paper substrate was lost. Additionally, inappropriate form of mounting contributed to the loss of legibility and acceleration of the degradation process. Not mentioning losses caused by gunshot or bullet fragment during the war. The sketchy nature of the work, the degree of damage, and the presence of valuable historical strata led us to propose another solution to the owner. To carry out processes limited to minimal conservation without the reconstruction of the painting layer, in order to stabilize it. The form of the mounting was modernized so that it could fulfill its protective functions while maintaining its original aesthetics, using museum glass, necessary distances, and acid-free materials. However, it was clearly stated that only short-term exposition is possible. As a substitute, a virtual reconstruction was made for display purposes, based on studies of other surviving works by the artist and fragments of the original, making themselves visible in analytical lights. As a starting base, digital photography proved to be more adequate compared to the scan because it reproduced the nuances of the structure of the watercolor sketch much better in this case. To sum up, what can we do to protect historic objects from the effects of ex overexposure? We can firstly arrest them in a stairhouse, box, drawers, an axic safe, or even freeze them. Secondly, make different types of copies, for example, impression copies, printouts, or digital versions. Thirdly, make attempts to reduce negative factors during exposure by minimizing lighting and cut off harmful radiation ranges, also by air-conditioned display cases, anoxic display or absorbent filters. Fourthly, by modifying the form of the framing or the original construction of the artifact. But we can also explore its potential. Conservation process is an excellent excuse to point out other values of historic object and show them in a different way not only as material, ancient, often beautiful artifacts. Our practice shows that the holistic approach of a conservator looking for individual solution, creatively combining various aspects, often changes our and the owner's expectation regarding the accessing and exhibiting the historic object. As a result, 
there are much broader opportunities to attractively and actively display cultural heritage objects without unduly compromising the original substances. Thank you for your attention.